So we have done some computations with the with the derivative uh, uh, from the definition, from the um, uh, from the uh, 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 algebraic properties, okay, and uh, and uh, otherwise um, component ones, okay. So uh, as you can see, some of the rules appear in a, they're less explicit as I suppose to what is the uh, a way to uh, it is like a version of the um, uh, of different of, of integration of of uh, uh, functions that are constant as well as um, uh, a constant function. If you differentiate once, a uh, constant function differentiate constant being vector at this time. You integrate it once and you have a linear function. Okay, you integrate twice, you have some kind of quadratic function because the parameter is still uh, a number. The uh, uh, there is nothing weird that can happen. You just uh, add some some multiplications. In fact, in fact, what I did not indicate here in the, the top, uh, we're talking about the gravity uh, situation. Um, so you, you are certain that's why I started with zero negative g, which is the acceleration. And at the end, that that's not the uh, the only thing that can, you can do in order to see that uh, you have um, um, uh, you have a situation very similar to uh, to calculus one, and that is I'll see, simply ex expose the acceleration here. So I will simply have the first term will be zero zero negative g multiplied by t squared over two plus c t plus d. Okay. So as you can see, that is uh, this this is my Acceleration. So yeah, integrate acceleration. One, uh, I integrate a. I got uh, I got what is it? A t plus c. I integrate one, one more time. A t squared over two plus c d plus c t plus d. Okay. So these are integrations uh, look exactly like in calculus one. Okay. And so uh, and you realize that well, yeah, I could I could do that as many times as long because as long as the, cons the vectors involved are constant. So they certainly, if we start with the constant acceleration, then the we integrate constant, and then every time you integrate, the uh, constant appear, appears, and then it might be integrated again, and the edits will still remain a constant, and t certainly simply is a constant multiple, and that's why um, uh, you think of it component wise or not, it doesn't matter, as you can see, there's also exactly like in, in calculus. Okay. Uh, so uh, the fundamental theorem of calculus, as you can see, uh, tells us the total displacement uh, if you know the velocity. Okay, and, and finally, uh, indirect how we can derive facts about uh, the geometry of motion from uh, from differentiation. And this is uh, the geometry is very simple. The setup is is here on the left. We are we are staying on the surface of the sphere, even though it could be n-dimensional. But let's say dimension is three. The sphere is uh, where we are, like the surface of the Earth. And then, uh, and then, uh, what can we say about the, uh, the velocity? And uh, and as you can see, we are. I'm I'm prepared to now uh, differentiate. Well, I'm prepared to first I observe that because the uh, because my um, uh, my, my, my distance to the center of the Earth is fixed, the, and, uh, the derivative means, it means that the derivative will be zero. Okay, that's what I'm saying here. That's all. So that that's directly follows. So I, why do I put square here is just, just for, for simplicity. So the, uh, uh, for the computation that follows, follow will be easier. So here I just, I, I rewrite the square of the, um, of the magnitude as the dot product of the function with itself. So f t f t. Okay. And now I differentiate by the dot product rule. Okay, so so one of the derivative of the first times the second plus derivative of the <coughs> plus the first time derivative of the second and which is uh, on the same thing. Or twice f prime f is equal to zero, or f prime f equal to zero. So the dot product, as you can see, what we have arrived at is the, the this statement, okay? 
for this very simple uh, application of the uh, uh, dot product rule of differentiation of vectors in any of, of barometric functions in any dimension is uh, we discovered that the dot product of the velocity and the um, and the location location let me plot it uh, maybe this one is so the center of the earth this is the uh, uh, the vector of our location from the origin to our location so f of t is here and then uh, we have the um, the velocity vector f prime of t okay so what what have we discovered here that product equal to zero. It means what we expect. It means that the uh, <coughs> the the f factor is is relied onto the f prime factor. Uh, what, what was the word? Uh, it is orthogonal. Orthogonal. Yes. So uh, indeed, they, these two are orthogonal. Um, uh, yeah, it is. I suppose we do expect that if we stay on the surface of the Earth, our velocity would, should better be. We should not point either in the inside the Earth or outside the Earth. It would mean that we're taking off. Okay. So indeed, uh, uh, this is actually you, this, you can serve this as an explanation of the meaning of 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 motion on the surface of the of, uh, any, or any kind of surface. It means that you got to stay within. Your velocity has got as a vector has got to stay within the tangent plane to uh, in that point. So you cannot go off or, or above or below that that plane. Your uh, uh, velocity vector has to stay, stay within uh, that plane, even though we haven't defined what the tangent plane is. That's still to come. It is surfaces, and so we have to talk about functions of several variables before we get there. But in the case of the uh, of the surface of the Earth. Uh, the meaning of the tangent plane is fairly uh, simple. In fact, you can use this as an, ex as an explanation of what it is. So the tangent plane uh, to the, to the uh, uh, surface sphere is the set of all vectors perpendicular to the radius at, 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 a, at a particular point. Of all vectors perpendicular to the radius, which applies to uh, just as well applies to um, to the circle, except you know instead of tangent plane, we have we had a tangent line. Okay, but it still applies. So applies. So this is zero. This is the radius. Okay, and then uh, uh, you could go left, right, doesn't matter or how far, so that doesn't matter, but as long as the, the angle remains 90 degrees, together this whole thing forms a plane. Okay, at least in the, in the situation of, a, of a, um, this is what it looks like, uh, in the situation of the uh, sphere, uh, the meaning is, is fairly transparent. Like this. Okay. Uh, but we don't stop here because uh, there, there is the same exact computation, but it now can be applied to, uh, to the, the other pair. So the first, we, what we just discussed in the pair is uh, location as a vector and its velocity. It's a, that's one pair. And the other pair is the same relation between velocity and acceleration. Okay, so we could start, uh, start and do the exact same thing, but now we will compare to, like I said, f, f double prime, f prime with f, f double prime. Okay, so, so uh, the assumption is similar. So assume, assume, and instead of assuming that our location to the origin was fixed in distance, assume that the magnitude of the velocity is, is, is fixed. So in other words, it's constant speed. So suppose we're moving at a constant speed, and we don't really say anything about waves staying on the surface of the Earth. The motion could be anything in, in any dimension, and uh, always saying that we're moving at a constant speed. In other words, if I, I start drawing these uh, tangents, they will be all plane form. Okay. So uh, what can we, can we derive? We already know what we can derive. Uh, well, well, let's do it anyway. So uh, ddt of f prime. 
squared is equal to zero. Okay, so that's the same thing. And now we apply the, just like last time, we split it into multiplication of the vector by itself. I'm sorry, that is not the dot product. As we have used it, f prime dot f prime equal to zero. Apply the uh, dot product rule gives me once again what does it, it give me? It gives me f double prime f prime plus f prime f double prime is equal to zero. Okay, so the product rule is simply the, the, the dot stand for the dot product. Okay, and, uh, and then the same little uh, 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 operation here f double prime f prime is equal to zero, f double prime f prime is equal to zero, and once again we have f double prime perpendicular to f prime, the exact same computation. Same computation, same conclusion. So in other words, uh, I mean, you can even, if you put it in words, then it is actually um, uh, even simpler. So, uh, so if this, well, maybe it's not so easy. After all, stated, even though, as you can see, it is exactly the same computation with the exact same uh, participants. Uh, well, participants are different, but the relation between the two is the same. So one is the derivative of the other. The only initial assumption is that the initial function has a magnitude equal to one. Okay, if that is the case, or, or any other constant, if that's the case, you you end up with the the derivative of that function perpendicular to the original function. So the original function is derivative. The its derivative is second derivative, and they turned out to be perpendicular. And now I'm plotting the second derivative, and it's supposed to be every time it's supposed to be perpendicular like this even though it's not necessarily on the same side. In fact, when you turn, when you, you can see it is, a, it is quite, quite revealing, actually, uh, how, uh, how the uh, acceleration turns the, the derivative. So every time we're turning right, and the, by, by coincidence, we were keep, keep turning right here, uh, the, uh, that's what acceleration does to velocity. So they, those red uh, arrows, they turn the, uh, uh, the velocity, even though velocity at its length remains the same, but the uh, uh, the uh, the acceleration turns turns changes its direction. Okay, just like with the uh, uh, motion of uh, uh, on the circle. Okay, so uh, so that's that's the conclusion that that we draw from uh, uh, no knowledge of a specific specific formula for either f in the first case, um, as you can see, this very arbitrary uh, very arbitrary motion on the on the sphere. In the second example, it is once again nothing specific at all, as long as the uh, the speed remains the same, and after all, if you think about it, you can you can pick any road, and you can drive on it with constant speed. Okay, so in other words, the, this this situation will be applicable to uh, to any motion. Any curve can be studied in this, in this fashion, which actually takes us to uh, to the next uh, to the next topic uh, of of curvature. Uh, but um, well, any any questions about this computation? So that is the simplest situation when you were, the, the second example is more important in the sense that, well, it's not limited to any particular shape, uh, but in any, any curve can be followed by, at a constant speed, still to be demonstrated. Uh, and then in that case, uh, your, your velocity change directions, but not magnitudes. And, and the nice thing about it is, the, is that the acceleration will be always uh, perpendicular like this, always perpendicular. Okay, so let me just make sure that if we're moving, uh, we're turning right. Uh, if we're turning right, we, we see what's happening. If we're turning left, uh, the the acceleration will be pointing in the in the other direction. Well, of course, the, uh, the exception always. Uh, I don't think I made a picture. The always the exceptional situation is when the. Uh, Has, has to be, this is, has to be um, said. So the two vectors are perpendicular, only the one exception. The dot product equal to zero means that the two vectors are perpendicular to each other except what's the exceptional situation? When they're both zero? 
or even one, one of them is zero, is is this. So f prime is equal to zero, or f double prime equal to zero, then uh, uh, then there is no way of, there is the, 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 there is no meaning of angle between two vectors. Okay, so if one of them is zero, there is no triangle there to, to think about. Uh, and in, in terms of motion, uh, you, you, do, you do not want to stop. That's the idea that we're also going to uh, mention a few times, that uh, when you are tracing a curve and you're trying to understand the curve, uh, you don't want to stop in the middle, and then because then you are, uh, then the, well, then the whole, the, the whole construction here uh, falls apart, and, uh, and we, we don't really know, um, well, we'll see, we'll see how, how that stands in the way. Uh, and the second option is uh, f double prime equal to zero. Is uh, what does that mean? Uh, it means uh, it means that we're moving on the on the straight line for sure. Okay. In fact, if we're moving on the straight line, the uh, uh, hold on. Where is the that exception? There is another exception here, and that is the straight line. Straight line. A double prime doesn't have to be zero. Hold on a second, what is am I missing? Uh, uh, okay. So uh, so if we're moving on a straight line, this does not apply. We could move on a straight line by and uh, uh, okay, so okay, so so if we're moving on a straight line, and if prime is equal to one, then uh, uh, then certainly f double prime is equal to zero. Okay, so if there is no change of direction, and we know that there is no change of magnitude, it means that the second derivative is equal to zero. Okay, so so that's the the other exception that does not uh, come into play here. Well, it is an exception. No, this one is either straight line or or yeah, it is straight line. So before we do the, uh, uh, it's uh, the uh, uh, turn to the next topic, which is uh, curvature, uh, the curvature of a, of, a, of a curve, which is to be studied with the uh, with the parameter curves. Uh, there, let me show you the, this uh, little demonstration that uh, I should have shown you before. It is about. Okay. It is about, about ballistics, so it's a much simpler topic. That's why I want to put it out of the way. So, so apparently, uh, so the early, the early uh, s uh, history of, of uh, artillery, and even before that, uh, people, according to some reports, people thought that this was the the trajectory of a, of a cannonball would be <laughs> triangular. So, uh, so it goes a straight line and then drops. Slows down, okay, and then and then drops vertically. Also in the in the so that part was correct, as if you you drive the ball on the uh, on the top of a, of, a, of, a, of a building and then drop it. Okay, so uh, so that is uh, even though there are no actual records, but that's uh, a report that uh, has been made uh, many times. So the only explanation is that it is the the uh, the person uh, who actually means the cannon stands behind it. And then you can you can see what what's happening when you shoot it. It is uh, it is actually quite plausible. So that's that's I so I'm modeling the motion of the ball. That's this is the cannonball, uh, but on um, based on the parabola. Okay, but then we look at it from behind, from the place where uh, the gunner is standing. Okay, so so let me try to see. Uh, <coughs> Slowing down, slowing down, slowing to stops. So look at the, the cannonball. Stops almost and then starts dropping. Slowly, slower, slower, slower. Faster, faster, faster. And then, uh, well, and then. Okay, so so uh, I, I, it seems to be that it is some plausible uh, explanation why that kind of idea could even appear. Um, in the Middle Ages, say, even though even though they had those trebuchet and all kinds of similar uh, weapons, and uh, even in uh, Roman times and before that, so they probably had, had thought about it. But since the main person in charge of it stands behind it, they might might got, had, have a, have a, a slightly distorted version of, of of what's happening. Besides, this is the parabola. 
this is a parable, and in reality, especially in those times, uh, the objects were large and they were not very fast going, so it means that the uh, air resistance was significant, so the, the path would have been uh, dropping faster at the top, so the actual trajectory would be like this. So the second half of the second part of the trajectory will be steeper, steeper down, and that also explains why it might appear that it's going vertically almost straight. And only in the early uh, Renaissance, roughly, uh, the people already started solving those quadratic equations and cubic equations now, okay, so like uh, 1300s, and, and then, uh, and then uh, somebody actually probably stood uh, to the side here observing and said, well, this actually looks like a curve, and then asked himself, uh, I think it was Natalia, and he said, well, it looks like a uh, uh, parabola, so it must be parabola. They didn't know a lot of curves there, so it wasn't a big discovery if you think about it. So they had uh, they had the quadrilateral parabolas, the hyperbolas, ellipses, and that that's almost it. Okay, and so the, they just started working on cubic equations. Okay, so so that they didn't have too many choices, and they, indeed they, they were right in the sense that without air resistance, the trajectory is, is um, uh, a problem. Okay. So that is a, certainly is a much simpler uh, story than what we're about to, uh, to face. And that is how to study the curvature of a curve. So a very different problem as well. So the curvature of a, of a, of a, of a curve, not of a parametric curve. So there is a subtle difference. Uh, to a big, big, big difference of a curve. So we have studied parametric curves and sometimes you can't skip the word parametric and say curve, but really it's not, not a very good idea. The, the reality is we, a curve is, a curve is, for the time being, this is the definition we accept, the definition is uh, the path of a parametric curve. path of a parametric curve, meaning that uh, uh, um, if I take my unit circle, uh, that's a curve even though there are several, several parametric curves that serve it. So you can drive uh, along a circular path in, in a number of ways. They all serve as parametric curves. You can go slow, you can clockwise, counterclockwise, fast, slow, slow, then fast. Uh, they all, in, as long as you stick with the, with the road, you can even stop. Uh, they all they will be part of the curve, they produce this curve, okay? So, but then our interest is, in fact, is, uh, is the uh, curve itself, not the parametric curves. So somebody, you might, might drive very radically and uh, you wouldn't you know uh, what's going on that much. Uh, and and we are, it's like we're building a road, or we are investigating, investigating how, how it would feel to drive on that road. So the curvature would be, uh, for example, you don't want to build a highway where the curve is too sharp for a particular speed that you expect from the motorists uh, so that the curvature could not, be, uh, could not be too high. So it's a curve, it's not a sharp turn, but that might be too much. Okay, so my, 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 maybe the curve has to be more, you know, like, uh, so you have to turn how, how slowly you have to get into, into, the, into the turn in order to, in order to, uh, to, to, to for all the drivers, they're not here uh, to, uh, uh, to drive safely. So it's about building or testing and not about driving. So roads, about roads, not, not drivers. Okay, so, um, <coughs> so what is the best driver? But, but on the other hand, we don't have anything else. As you can see, a curve, is the path of a parametric curve, then there is really no other way for, for us to study curves, seriously speaking, uh, about through parametric curves, parameterizations, and therefore you would have to do, we have to use drivers in order to drive through that road and tell us what's going, going on. So the best driver is who, who drives at constant speed. We just saw this example of how, how nice the, the behavior uh, uh, is demonstrated when, uh, when the driver is uh, uh, driving uh, very consistently at the exact same speed all, all the time. Okay, so then the, this picture on the right is what's going to happen. Okay, so that's that's the perfect driver. It is a, a one driving at a constant speed.
Okay, so with fresh well, members, the speed is of a parametric curve is f dot f prime. Okay, so um, and then a constant p is a possibility. Okay, so the uh, the speed how that, that's the definition. Okay, but also if we actually go back to uh, and this is the velocity, right? And let's uh, let's for a moment look at the, um, um, the simple situation when everything is uh, is constant. So uh, velocity is the displacement over time. Okay, at the at the same time, uh, the speed is the distance over time. The difference is that's where the difference between velocity and speed comes in. Either through this definition, that's that's certainly fine. That's the relation between the speed and the velocity. But on the other hand, uh, uh, this is uh, another way to approach it. Uh, you can you can't define the speed without uh, uh, without the display without the velocity. Okay, so simply speed is what they, that's the original. If you you know the first time you you learn about uh, about motion, it would be the speed, not the velocity. So so you take the distance over time rather than displacement over time. It is actually a simpler concept. And the distance is, so what's the difference between displacement and distance? Displacement. Your distance is the, is the absolute value of displacement. It, uh, or the magnitude of, yes. of, of the displacement, indeed. So um, is equal to the magnitude of displacement. So, so the, 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 key, the, the key idea then is to what we have been discussing here is that the distance is a number while displacement is a vector. And as a result, naturally, the velocity is a vector and the, display, and the speed is a number. Uh, or other, and then if you want to think in terms of uh, functions, then everything, when everything becomes variable, then velocity is a parameter curve, like a vector while vector defined, while the speed is, uh, is uh, numerical. Numerical function. So they have the same input key and uh, time, and uh, uh, but it's, there's a crucial, uh, crucial difference uh, be between them. Okay, so uh, so now we wanna we wanna uh, understand the curvature and uh, um, uh, under the ideal circumstances the uh, uh, we uh, the point of this would be to to, to uh, take away from the consideration the uh, the magnitude of the speed or magnitude of the velocity okay so only the direction y because the uh, what is the idea of of curvature the idea of curvature is, well, what's the idea of curvature? I mean, it's, it could be the, the, the word is very descriptive. So how would you describe curvature? Well, I mean, if you're driving on it, uh, on the road, and you, you can say that this, this, uh, this road is curvier than another road, or something like that. What is that? What are you talking about? About your experience? Is it just how much of deviation in a straight line? Uh, kind of. You, 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 uh, deviation of the, of the straight line, what is the straight line? Uh, well, I mean, what, what specific straight line? Do you, you, didn't, you, you didn't say, you just didn't say quite right, but you were on the right track because you just have to identify what the, that straight line you're talking about. Deviation from a straight line, what is that straight line? Oh, the, the tangent. It is the tangent. So how, how quickly you deviate at every moment of time of that straight line being the tangent line is the curvature. Tangent line, and then, uh, uh, and then you see where that, so that's the, the tangent line at one particular moment, and then, uh, and then there's another one, and then the next moment your tangent line is elsewhere, 
uh, where there is, uh, there is not only starting at a different point, the angle also has changed. If you're on a straight line, we know that that's the main thing to remember about the curvature is that a straight line has no curvature. Or it, well, we need, whenever we say that, we say that the curvature is zero. The straight line has zero curvature. Well, here you see what, what has happened is, uh, the key, what has happened is, uh, is that uh, um, uh, the tangent line has turned. And that reveals the, the curvature. Okay, so, well, be, before we go on, uh, well, well, let me write it out. Okay, so the idea of curvature is uh, the change of, of the direction in the, in, uh, or right, not just the change of the direction, how fast the direction is changing. So the, the rate of change, of rate of change, the rate of change of the direction with the direction given by uh, by, by the tangent line. Yes. So, uh, the rate of change of the direction uh, as, uh, as uh, <coughs> given by the tangent line, okay. Um, uh, one thing is then, uh, yeah, I, I, I intentionally or not, I drew the, the, these two um, uh, uh, vectors, uh, two tangent vectors, uh, differently. And uh, not only in the direction, but also in the magnitude. So, so then, um, in that case, you know, what is important now to, to realize that if we state it as is, the, uh, the, the change of the direction will be uh, might be misunderstood by the change of the tangent vector, which is not exactly the same. Only the direction of the tangent vector matters. So to then to get rid of, of, that, uh, of that possibility that also the, um, and concentrate on something uh, more, more specific direction, uh, tangent vector, tangent vector, not line, uh, that's what I want to concentrate on, the tangent vector. Uh, it, is, uh, it is easier if that tangent vector is, in fact, um, say, has the same magnitude. So, so if f prime, that's, that's the tangent vector is equal to 1, then only the direction matters. So that's why we want to have, uh, we want to drive at a constant speed. Okay, so, so once again, if, let's assume that the, cons, the speed is, is 1, then uh, the, the tangent vector will be changing a direction, but not, and in fact, if I, would, if I bring them all the AR vectors, I could bring them to the same point uh, or, or origin, then all I have to watch is a, it will be a pure rotation. So these are tangent vectors of the same magnitude because they are all uh, of magnitude 1. So uh, the tangent vector rotates. So f prime rotates, rotates with uh, with time. Okay. Remember, we, we did the, the when we did the differentiation of a, of a parameter curve. Uh, that's exactly what we discussed. From how the parameter curves, we sample the parameter curve. We then uh, um, draw the uh, then we draw the displacements, and then <coughs> and then we put them all uh, at the same origin. Okay, so and then and then it makes more sense to speak of the rate of change of the direction, but now we can just replace direction with the uh, tangent tangent vector. So it will be entirely the rate of change of the tangent vector, f prime. So the rate of change that's what the curvature is under the restriction that f f f double prime f prime magnitude is one. Then the uh, the rate of change of the of the tangent vector is the curvature. So once again, so uh, so that's the idea. But really, what we end up with, if f prime is one, then the curvature of p equal f of t over parameter curve is it is actually a function, right? Because at different moment of time, there might be different curvature easily. Uh, is the rate of change. of f prime, the tangent, tangent vector, and so, uh, 
So what I'm talking about the rate of change of that time f prime is the rate of change of f. It's the original f, and now we're talking about the meaning of the meaning of the rate of change, right? So it is the rate of change of the rate of change. So we are we are in fact uh, talking about that double prime on the, the circumstances. So we're talking about uh, the rate of change of the of the change vector is the acceleration, also a vector. Uh, we don't know anything about that vector. It, what the example that we saw is that if we're turning right, the uh, um, the um, uh, well, technically we, we would put absolute value here because we don't really want to. Uh, when we just speak of of, uh, of curvature, we don't want to necessarily separate the one the left turn from the right turn. So we were looking at the at the uh, magnitude of the vector. Uh, so that one one thing we know, and let, let's confirm that that this makes sense. So uh, uh, I think we talked about that. If you move, well, we did talk about it. If you're moving on the, we're taking the simplest case of, I mean, the simplest case is a straight line, the curvature is zero. By the way, the notation is kappa of t. Okay, so uh, uh, kappa uh, stands for the curvature of t, and for the straight line it is equal to zero. Now let's, let's uh, think about m double prime uh, of, of the standard parameterization, not standard parameterization, but rather uh, motion on the circle with a constant speed, but um, equal, speed equal to one, as a matter of fact, but the radii are different, okay? So, uh, so this, the, the vector of the, uh, the vector of the magnitude is, should be the same. Okay, so I'm sorry, the, the vector, the, the, these are the changing vectors, right? So this is a prime and this is a prime. And I uh, intentionally drew uh, exactly the same size vector. Okay, now imagine what the, uh, uh, the we also know, remember, that the, uh, the uh, vector of the acceleration will be perpendicular. Okay, so both of them will be pointing towards the center. Okay, so now that, that it matters, but what if, what about the magnitude? Just look at the picture and think about the magnitude of the of the tangent vector. Considering, let me draw the next one. So the next one might look like this. Over the same period of time, over the same period of time, uh, uh, we co we're covering the same distance. Remember, f prime of magnitude is equal to one, which means that we cover the same distance here and the same distance there. Okay, so it's same same exact speed. So I covered this much here, <coughs> and I covered the exact same distance here. Okay. So, do you see what has happened to the vectors of the of this of the velocity of the uh, the tangent, the tangent vector? There's, there's greater displacement on the left. The the, the the greater turn on the left, right? The, we uh, over the same distance, we had to have we have to turn the uh, uh, the tangent vector larger, uh, more, more. Okay, so so bigger turn over the same distance. So the distance, distance is the same or same time as well because uh, distance and time is, is the same here because look at it, we are moving at constant speed so distance is the same as the time and as you can see we have to tweet because the distance uh, although the same distance, the, the turn of the bigger circle is smaller than the turn of the tangent, tangent line is, uh, is, uh, will be smaller than that if, if the circle is small. And then we conclude immediately that indeed the, um, um, that the former is, has higher curvature. Okay, so well, let, me put, let me put G here to compare. So, so kappa, kappa. Okay, so kappa here will be less than kappa there. Okay, the curvature of the smaller circle will be larger than the curvature of the larger circle. In fact, you can guess from, the, uh, from what we did yesterday 
uh, what, what the relation between them will be if, say, this is, this is 1 and this is 3. What, what is the relation? between the curvature of, of the small circle which has radius 1 and the other one has, uh, has, has radius 3. Remember when we, uh, we did this little uh, exercise when we computed the derivative of, the, uh, of our uh, of parameterization of the circle and then what if the circle becomes larger? Remember what happens to the derivative and therefore to the second derivative. It multiplied by the same number. So, so uh, that same parameterization here, in comparison to there, you, you get your derivative will be times 3. And the second derivative will be times 3, too. And so that, that which means that the factor will be actually by 3. By factor of 3. And the, exa the exact number is actually this is 1, 1, and this is 1, 1 third. Okay, the exact number, the, the curvature, as we will see, uh, is uh, 1 over the radius. For, for circles, uh, the curvature is the reciprocal of the radius. And let me state that. So for circles of radius r. And this is for straight lines. Okay, so, so it's not really that complicated. We could actually take this as a definition. So let me state this, uh, what I have written here, write it one more time. Um, uh, this is called the arc length parameterization. You remember arc length from calculus 2? Remember measuring, measuring uh, lengths of curves? But those were given by graphs of functions, so that's the only difference. We're dealing with the exact same issue, except now we have primitive curves. The formula is similar, the idea is exactly the same, uh, but uh, we'll, just, uh, we'll just expand the applicability of that idea. So, so let me state the definition first. So, uh, in our link, parameterization. Of a curve is a primitive curve naturally. With with a prime uh, equal uh, a, a prime magnitude equal to one. Okay, and uh, um, uh, arc length parameterization. Okay, so uh, so in particular for this parameterization is uh, uh, the uh, the length. This is which we we're going to examine next. Uh, the length is uh, uh, of of the curve. Just in case, from t equal a to to t equal b is is what the arc length. We're moving at a constant speed in to one. What's the how much do we cover? How much if you oh. do one mile an hour in an hour? Uh, in two hours you get two two miles and so on. So it simply be minus a, right? Assuming that b is larger than a, uh, then uh, yeah, that, that's what we get. Uh, the only thing that remains is, is actually explain what arc length is, and we have to take that idea from calculus two and apply to uh, to parameter curves. Okay, and then well, 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 when we have sorted that out, we can we can move, move back to and deal with uh, um, uh, with uh, with uh, uh, with the curvature because the curvature is 
Um, unfortunately, the, uh, the, we don't have this luxury, or, or always, not, not always have this luxury, to choosing our grain parameterization. So we have a parameter curve, and then either we reparameterize it, uh, which, is, which is, so we have to figure that out, or we have to have the definition of the, uh, of the curvature that is independent, or at least a formula for the, uh, the curvature that is independent of parameterization, not a special kind of parameterization, which is this is. So, so we need to uh, figure out what the arc length is in order to actually explain what uh, arc length parameterization is. Why? Why does it equal to one? Um, so, um, well, let, let, let's just let's just do ex examples of. of well, let's take the simplest example and, and find the arc length parameterization. So, uh, the circle. Ready, sir? What is the uh, arc length parameterization. And uh, it, is, it is possible with a simpler curve, such as the circle, to figure out what that is by pretty much tweaking the, uh, the original definition, which as we did in the past. So our original, original uh, parameterization is the, the simplest one that comes from trigonometry. It will be r cosine t, r sine t. Uh, first of all, this is not an arc length parameterization, so the standard parameterization uh, not arc length. Why not? Oh, yeah. Well, because it's um, the magnitude of f prime is r, right? Uh, that, 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 that's right. Uh, the, of, of, of the magnitude of f prime is r, that's right. So f prime, let me write that out one again. So, uh, it will be r sine t negative uh, r cosine t, and so the magnitude is 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 r. Okay, so uh, so unless it is unit circle, it doesn't work out. We don't have a uh, we don't have our plane parameterization. So, but uh, once we have carried out that computation, is not really um, we could try to guess what uh, what we sh how we should modify the. Uh, say g of t, how, what should we do with f in order to, the, the same computation, produce 1 here? What do we do? You just pull out r. Pull out where? So we are looking at this one, we are looking at this one, and we need to modify in such a way that we would have, uh, it should be the same so I cannot just get rid of r. So, uh, so um, the curve should be the same. The parameter is somehow different. Under differentiation, these R's need to disappear. How would we make them disappear? So G prime of T is negative sine T cosine T. How is it even possible? What do we do with the... So the R will go away if some kind of 1 over R pops up. So where do we put that 1 over R? Well, well I don't want to say this yet. Where do we put 1 over R? So, uh, so uh, the idea, we could, we could get the idea from over here. We have to move, we have to move, uh, say if, if radius is large, we have to move uh, We have to move slower, or wait, we have to move faster. Okay, so, okay, let me just give you the answer. It's simply uh, r cosine t over r, r sine t over r. So, uh, so when you differentiate by the chain rule, that 1 over r will, uh, will, key, it will cancel r, and then it will work out. Okay, so we'll, uh, we'll resume this next time.